What should a salesperson be paid? Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. You know, as you continue to grow your business, there'll come a time when you're going to have to hire a salesperson. You know, after all, you can't do it all yourself. So when that time comes, you know, how are you going to pay them? Are you going to pay them with a salary, salary and commission? You know, then how is that going to be structured? Um, you know, so there's a number of different ways that you can pay your salesperson. But first of all, you're going to have to find that salesperson, and I tell you, that can be quite a challenge. Um, again, you know, you probably want to use the, the, your uh, resources, uh, you know, Indeed and uh, LinkedIn, uh, when you're looking for a salesperson. Now, a uh, salesperson, they, they could come from other uh, industries, that's fine. But the one thing you're going to find out is that the person is going to, it's going to take them a while to learn the cleaning industry. Because any good salesperson needs to know their product. Plain and simple. So with that being said, um, it takes on average about 12 months for a person to learn the industry uh, to, in order to be a really uh, effective uh, salesperson. Uh, that's been uh, the experience that I've had. So, you know, the thing is, is that when, uh, when I had salespeople, what I did is I put the people out, out in the field. Uh, nothing worse than having a salesperson that really doesn't know or understand processes, cleaning processes. Many times I've, I've talked to cleaning people or uh, salespeople that um, really just try to BS their way through a situation. And I really love that because, uh, especially after 33 years in this industry, there's not much you can really get by me. So, you know, when they start telling me about this, that, and the other, and how fantastic this is, and how this works, and here's the steps for this, and they're totally offline, uh, you know, I just love that. Which, you know, makes really no sense why they even bother trying to BS you, because they're not going to make the sale, you know. Uh, but anyway, the whole point of my story here is that uh, make sure that they have uh, training in the field. Make sure that they know how to clean. You know, have them clean an office building, have them clean a medical center, have them clean a car dealership. You know, and get them out there and do some project work. You know, they have to know how to strip and wax the floor. If you're a salesperson and you're going to try to tell me the process of stripping and waxing a floor and trying to push my product uh, on you uh, and telling you, well, this is the best stripper I ever used, you know, and, and here's why. Um, well, you better have some experience in doing that. Uh, that's another uh, example that I had where this person, I could tell they had never been out in the field. Uh, typically, these salespeople will get uh, training from the, the manufacturer's rep that's come in with a new product of, of, of whatever, you know, and uh, okay, let's go back in your warehouse and we'll do a little. Uh, 10 by 10 area, and that's their training. Um, you know, that's that's all fine and good, I guess, when you're thinking about the basics. But you know, uh, if I have a salesperson, I want a salesperson that has uh, real life experiences. They've been out in the field. They understand that. Okay, well, here's what can happen out in the field. You know, every account's different. You know, just because it's a VCT tile floor doesn't mean that it's just going to go go smooth. Uh, you know, and the same thing with a ceramic tile or stone or wood, you know. And that's why it's so important that they do actually have knowledge of how to do these procedures. So that's my number one tip for you, is to make sure when you do hire a, tra or a salesperson, make sure that you give them the proper training. Okay? So, anyway, uh, you give them the proper training, and through this training, um, you uh, obviously you've hired them and uh, you decided that you're going to uh, go ahead and, and pay them but you're not quite sure how you might pay them or how, how you might structure it. Well, uh, one thing you don't want to do is don't pay a base salary. Uh, a base salary is just a low motivation to sell. Uh, so I definitely stay away from that. You know, so if you let's say you're giving them a base salary of $1,800 a month or something like that, you know, $2,300, whatever it is. But stay away from a base salary. Uh, there's just no motivation for them to sell, so they can get uh, they can get to be a lazy sales salesperson. Now, uh, the most common method of uh, compensation for a salesperson is uh, salary and commission. 
So that means that, okay, maybe I'm going to pay them $1,200 a month and then I'll give them a commission off of each sale they make. So and that's where it gets to be where you have to structure that portion of the commission. How are you going to structure that? And remember, you can structure it any way you want. Uh, there's no set rule for this. So, for example, let's say, oh, let's say that our target market is professional office buildings. And we like uh, professional office buildings and medical buildings. You know, so those are probably uh, accounts that we would probably pay a little bit more, a little higher commission uh, for our salesperson to get. So maybe, you know, for every, uh, uh, every um, medical account that they get, maybe I'll pay them 20% commission. You know, or maybe I'll give them a one-time payout, uh, you know, of maybe 35% or whatever. You know, you can set that, set that standard or set that percentage. The, the thing is, is that you just want to make sure that it's fair for both parties. So that's, uh, that's what I'd probably recommend is just going with salary and commission. Uh, so give them a base salary. Uh, you know, you got to keep them hungry. You know, they're, they're salespeople. You got to keep them hungry. Don't make things comfortable for them, such as a base salary and so on and so forth. Make them work. That's what you hired them for. Uh, they want to get out there. They want to get leads. They want to go out and go out on appointments. They got to they got to close deals. That's that's why you hired them. So uh, you got your sales and commission uh, um, uh, set up, and so you might uh, do like I say. Your commission could be uh, it could be five five percent. Uh, you could do some short time commissions based on different things. And what I mean by that is that maybe you're going to set it up to where they get 5% of the 5% uh, commission on every account that they get, and that would be uh, monthly. And maybe that would go continue for six months, but then it falls off. Um, and that's what you always want to do. Never give a, never, never give a sales commission that, that never ends. Um, I always like to structure it to where I have my, my base salary, and then I'd give a commission uh, with 5% uh, for the first year. Um, and then after that, it could drop off to uh, two and a half percent, and then to, to zero. So I, you know, you could set that up to where that runs for for six months, three months, six months, and then one year. You know, however you want to do it. So you, maybe you will. Maybe you pay a salary. Uh, you know, you're paying a, a fifteen hundred dollar salary, and then you're going to pay a commission of five percent for the first six months, uh, two and a half percent for this the uh, the, the next six months, and then uh, uh, then it drops off to zero. So, you know, uh, that way there it keeps them hungry and they're continually going out and getting new leads and closing new deals. So that might be the way that you do it. Um, uh, some salespeople would tell you that they would prefer to have commission only. Now, that makes sense, you know, based on how you structure it, you could do that. And generally the good salespeople want that because they know they can make a lot of money in sales if they're commission only. But Anyway, there's a number of different things you can think about. Uh, there's no one set rule. Uh, just make sure that it's fair for both parties, you and the salesperson. And, uh, you know, if you do that, uh, then you'll probably be fine. Uh, the other thing that you got to take into consideration is that once you hired that salesperson, you got to make them accountable. Make sure that you have sales goals and have sales meetings, you know, and keep them on track as to where, the, where they're heading. Now, probably one of the best things you can do, I think, is to have a salesperson that you got set up on uh, on compounded uh, growth. So, meaning that I gave them a, a, a sales goal of $3,000 per month. Every month I want $3,000 worth of new business. So, when they do that, starting in January, and they do that month after month after month, that ends up being a lot of money in revenue generated in new sales. Uh, you can go to the janitorial store in the download library. We actually have a, a spreadsheet that will show you what that compounded uh, sales uh, looks like over a 12-month period. Uh, and you can put in any number you want. I put in $3,000. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a few hundred thousand dollars in one year. So that might be a strategy you might use. But anyway, um, you know, those are all things that you want to consider about when you hire a salesperson and uh, how you might pay them. Like I say, go with salary and commission. It's the a, it's a most common and it's probably the best method. So 
Hopefully you like this uh, tip and uh, when you hire a salesperson make sure you give them the training they need so they've had time out in the field so when they're out selling they don't look like an idiot. So that's all I have for now. Uh, until next time we'll see you.